everyone. So yeah, I'm Andrew, and I build quantum computers. And these are computers that take advantage of fundamental physics processes that today's computers not only fail to exploit, but actually try pretty hard to ignore. Now, just as classical computation is performed using bits, quantum computation is performed using quantum bits, or qubits. And what makes qubits special is that their computational power roughly doubles for every qubit that you add. So even with a few hundred error-corrected qubits, you could uh, potentially outperform all of the classical computers in the world combined. Now, quantum computers, or classical computers rather, have a bit of a head start, and it's going to be at least several years before quantum computers can begin to solve useful problems faster than a classical computer could. But just last month, we had a bit of, uh, for the field, uh, a first flight moment, where using a computer with just 53 qubits, a team from IBM, or sorry, from Google, used, uh, yeah, I'll get in trouble for that. From Google used, uh, we're able to solve a benchmarking problem in just under three and a half minutes, so a billion times faster than uh, the 10,000 years that the world's largest supercomputer would have required. So quantum computing promises a paradigm shift in computational power, and just as uh, classical computers have defined and driven innovation in the 20th century, Quantum computing is going to be one of the defining technologies of the coming century, driving revolutions in drug discovery, engineering, AI, and security, just to name a few. But one of the key challenges for the industry is that current quantum computers have operating temperatures around absolute zero, requiring cryogenics, ultra-high vacuum systems, and or laser cooling. And just one of these uh, cryogenic systems, for example, costs uh, over a million dollars. So the cost and complexity of all this is going to limit quantum computers to a mainframe role similar to today's supercomputers. At Quantum Brilliance, we have a different way. Our diamond-based quantum platform um, frees us of the cryogenics and vacuum systems that limit our competitors and will enable us to reduce our size, energy consumption, and cost by 10 or even 100 times. At the core of our computers are atomic scale defects in the diamond known as nitrogen vacancy setters. And owing to the unique properties of diamond, uh, the quantum properties of these defects are preserved even at room temperature. As an added bonus, our qubits are around a billion times smaller than standard qubits, and so are ideally suited for meeting the miniaturization demands of a quantum Moore's law. So, with this room temperature operation, um, we're able to break out of that paradigm of mainframe quantum computing and expand the scope to something where quantum is used across the full scope of today's classical computing, in offices, hospitals, vehicles, satellites, eventually even mobile phones. Now, as I said, quantum still has, it hasn't outperformed classical computers yet, but there's already a strong pull to access today's devices. Uh, for example, to help develop algorithms or applications, or for organisations looking to prepare themselves uh, to rapidly exploit large-scale quantum computers once they become available. And some customers are already paying over a million dollars per year uh, to access uh, premium cloud services. So at, uh, in the short term, for quantum brilliance, we're able to offer R&D devices that, in contrast to that cloud-based model, users can actually own, host, and operate themselves. These will be the world's first portable quantum computers and will allow users to build their understanding of quantum computing and test their integration into larger systems. As we uh, build our diamond uh, fabrication techniques and scale the larger numbers of qubits, um, our technology development pathway then takes us to quantum accelerators, which work with classical computers to perform the hardest compute tasks like uh, signal processing or machine learning. And because we've broken out of that mainframe role, Diamond has a much shorter pathway to providing quantum advantage over a classical device because we're only competing against similarly sized classical devices, not the world's best supercomputers. And then as we continue along, we'll also uh, be able to provide large scale quantum diamond quantum supercomputers. Our founding team consists of myself, a quantum hardware development expert, and Marcus Doherty, who leads our research group at the ANU and is the world's leading expert in the theory of quantum diamond systems. Uh, we put together a team of the world's best in diamond science and technology. We're making traction with early partners and customers, uh, particularly in high performance computing, both in Australia and internationally, and with defence. And uh, we owe a great debt to all of our mentors, but I'd particularly like to thank uh, the Canberra Innovation Network and uh, CSIRO's on program. Both have been fantastic for us. So, in conclusion, the, um, the hardware advances that enable classical computing to move beyond the mainframe both dramatically changed both the scope and market of quantum computing 
of classical computing, sorry, and also uh, its global impact. And what we want to do with our vision of quantum computing for all is do the same for quantum. So we have the potential to be the world's dominant quantum computing company, and uh, we're looking for investors, customers, R&D partners, and people interested in joining our team. Thank you.